Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at a cool new toy, which honestly is actually a very useful new tool. Uh, it is called Node Toy, and the entire idea behind this is it is an online shader generator. You can visually, uh, using a sequence of nodes, go ahead and create your own shaders. You've got real-time preview on the side, you can upload your own models, you've got HDR environment maps for rendering those things. Uh, you have a lot of nodes that go together, I think it's like 120 plus nodes you can use to create your environment. Uh, it is a cool new toy that is now in public beta access. So if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, it is nodetoy.co. Now this is actually built for uh, 3JS. You can open it up, by the way. I used my uh, Google credentials. Just head on over to nodetoy.co, click that link, and you are good to go. Um, it is built for 3JS and React 3 Fiber, but there's no reason why you can't use it with whichever you wish. Also, if you're using existing shaders, uh, they've got you covered there as well with the custom expressions. We'll see that in just a second. You also have material instances, so you can uh, quickly and easily create multiple variations of a material uh, and go through them like so. And also you get the ability to share your materials with other. Actually, that's one of those things you want to be aware of with this particular version right now is you have to share your, your results. Everything is public right now. You'll see here, There's this seems to be a future node toy plus uh, is coming soon and it's still going to be everything in free uh, but you're also going to have private projects at that point in time this point in time no private projects but let's go take a look at a kind of a complicated example so you can see the shader the example is over here on the right like so and over here is the um, the things used to create it you also can uh, toggle things on and off so there's your material slots right there so if you want to have multiple different sources you could do so here is the shader graph itself uh, over here we could toggle the preview on and off and what you see here let's go ahead and zoom in by the way uh, scroll button and zooms in middle mouse button um, pans around the scene. You do have a uh, mind map view down here, but it doesn't actually seem to work. Uh, down here, you have uh, assets, a number of things that you can work with. You can upload your own stuff as well, but if you want to bring in a texture or something, they've got a bunch of them defined right here in the asset library. And then other than that, you also have the shader. And this is actually the GSL shader uh, that is being generated from everything that we see above. If you want, that's the fragment. Over here, we can turn to the vertex shader over here. And over here, we have the uniforms. So if you want to go ahead and export out this code, they're all available right there. You'll also find over here, you can do a file uh, and then, oh wait, no, it's export project. You can export right here and this will spit it out in a version that is uh, ready to use with 3JS. So generate a draft and spit it out. So you see here, uh, the end result is done right here. So this is your, your node that's coming out. Here we've got a, a variety of different graphs, all these various different graphs that you're seeing right here. And here, so the emissive color one here, uh, opacity map over here, uh, those are all kind of each one of these different nodes of graphs are being used to are being used to ultimately populate this guy over here. Let's go ahead and show you how to create your own. Then I'll show you how to go ahead and fork an example like this one. So if you're you're creating your own shader from scratch. Uh, basically spin off a new shader. By the way, all of this stuff uh, is uh, documented. So if you come back up here, uh, you can find help for everything here. The documentation is very thorough, walks you through all the various different nodes that are available. Uh, there are keyboard shortcuts for pretty much everything we are working with here as well. So come over here, you see keyboard shortcuts. Uh, everything has a quick view. So even though it is a web application, it doesn't necessarily feel like it. Uh, here is our result. I can actually click that guy. And you see here we've got different options. So I could actually do a physics-based shader here and have various different other options available here. Or I could do a plain unlit shader. So you do have uh, various different options for which kind of shaders to generate. Uh, once again, we could drop down here into the texture library. So let's say I needed... Um, I don't know. Here, here, this is actually a neat one. You can actually do video as one of your sources. So here, RBG into the Albedo channel over here, and here you can see the end result of it. So this is Big Buck Bunny playing on this object over here. By the way, you do have control, so we could have it be a cube instead. Over here, we can have it be the uh, standard shader ball, uh, so you get a little bit more detail of how things work. So you can see here, you can even do video texture shaders, which is quite cool. Uh, we also have the ability to do it on a plane or onto a custom mesh if you wish. You've got control over the lighting, so you've got a variety of uh, HDRI um, environment maps available there. You also have control over how the background is generated, have it generate a physical sky for you, and you can set up the results of your sky here as well. Um, yeah, so that is your controls over here in terms of uh, previewing things. You also got the ability to turn 
uh, a grid on and off if you wish. Uh, again, when you are creating your shaders, the end results of your shaders show up down here. Uh, in terms of adding nodes to your node graph here, you just basically uh, right click in an empty space and you get this pop up search here. So if I need to have say a vector, search down there, vector, vector four. I can drop a vector four into my scene here. Now, another really cool thing here is if you're working with existing shaders, I can come down here, right click and say an expression. So I can do a custom expression like so. And I can actually set up uh, new input parameters. So if say here, I wanted to have one of them be uh, a vector three input. I can set defaults for it and have those pins come in. So I could have it go, this vector that we created over here, drills into that over there. But the cool thing here is what you're going to notice with the custom expression is there's code up here. What I can do is go ahead and click edit and it brings me down here to this custom code editor. And what you'll notice here is you get um, code completion and you get syntax highlighting, etc. So if you've got your own existing code to bring in, uh, you can use it directly using this custom expression node. Otherwise, you'll notice here uh, we have a ton of different nodes here. So for example, shapes, if I need to create a rectangle. I can create a rectangle like so. And then we've got tools here for like um, tiling stuff. We got trig operators in here. So uh, sign times, uh, we got sample. Actually, you can just scroll through here are all of the nodes. Again, I think there's something like 140 or 160 uh, different nodes to work with in creating your visual shaders, uh, which is uh, a fairly impressive amount here. And again, ultimately what you're doing is generating the code. All of your code is available uh, down here. You can see the end results of it right there. Uh, so very, very simple work. Let's say I wanted to do noise here, drop that in there. Let's drop the noise into our normal channel over here. And you see the immediate result there, or I could have dropped it into the, the metalness map. And you can see the preview updating over here. So that is uh, the process. We can basically create uh, new material. Boom. Our old one is still here. So you got this tab uh, interface. It is persistent. It remembers the last stuff that you created. Now, another cool thing here, and I always forget. So I go to go to files. I'll just leave, get out of here. So I can go over here to community. And what you're going to see is other things that people have worked on are available here. So if you like the shader, someone else, so you like this tune shader, someone else created, you click on it and you can check it out. So there it is here. You can see how they went about creating it. So the various different pieces that went together. So here's how they generated the normal maps. For example, uh, here's how they generated the lighting on it. Uh, and then the, the Fresnel uh, tune shading inline and the end result. So this is an unlit shader. Here is your end result. If you like this one, just click right here, fork it. And it is forked. It is now part of your files, or at least it's going to be. Now, again, the one challenge with no toy right now, uh, it is all entirely public. So if you want to use this as something for creating things that are super, super secret, uh, not an option as of yet, but that looks like there will be a paid version of this at some point in time if you want to keep things private. But here it is, your own version of it. So if you want now, you can go ahead and start uh, making changes to it like so and just start dropping them into the, the world as you want to create it. So I'm not gonna actually showcase creating nodes. Um, I'm, I'm not a very good shader creator to start with, to be honest, but where you're really gonna wanna do is basically jump in here, go to the, um, go to the file section right there and under the community, you're going to find a ton of content there and under learn, you're going to find some very good documentation that walks you through what you need to know uh, to get started creating shaders. Here's a walkthrough of, you know, creating 3d shaders and then all the various different nodes we looked at here. So for example, if you go under the miscellaneous, um, then you want to go to Veroni noise here. You can see how it is created. You see documentation of it. You can see examples using it over here. You can actually see it and you can fork off that particular example. So it's got very good, solid documentation. All of the parameters, the input uh, and output nodes are all documented here uh, in terms of what they're all about. And every single node in the thing, so we can put sin time, you can see it is fully documented. And once again, you can see an example of how to actually go about using that node in a shader graph. Very cool tool on the whole. Uh, once again, you want to go ahead and check that guy out. Uh, it is available at nodetoy.co. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.